ladies and gentlemen, it is finally time to start a new project. And what better kit to build than the new LA5 and 72 scale from Clearprop models? And yeah, the instructions came separate in the package for some reason. Anyway, let's look inside the box. Everything comes in this nice little Ziploc baggie and there are a lot of parts for a 72 scale plane. Like there are three main sprues and then two smaller ones for all the different details. The parts are well molded and there seems to be very little to no flash on them. The decals seem to be printed well and are pretty thin from first glance. Clear parts are mediocre for the most part. One of them broke off during the shipping process, but there doesn't seem to be any significant damage to it. And lastly, there's this sort of photo which with mostly interior details, but there's also some landing gear replacement parts and engine details on it. And let me just emphasize how good the molding on the plastic is. Just <clears throat> look at how crisp it is. And so for the price of around $26, this kit is very good. Highly recommend it to anyone who loves a highly detailed model straight out of the box. But enough of that, let's start by building the interior of the aircraft. I start off by clipping off the parts with side cutters and then cleaning the excess plastic with a hobby knife and some sandpaper. I'm gluing the parts with Tamiya Extra Thin because it's easy to use and it evaporates pretty fast. It likes to flow into small cracks and crevices, so it's best applied between two parts that are already in place. I find it easier to assemble all the interior parts first and then paint them, rather than paint them individually and then put all the parts together. Most of the photo edge parts included in the kit are from the interior, and I secure them with purple CA glue from Bob Smith Industries. These parts were protruding pretty far from the sidewall, so I test fitted the floor part with the seats to make sure they weren't protruding too far out, and everything fit in place. This was I think the smallest part in the kit, and no, for those curious, I don't need a magnifying glass to see all of this. One weird thing about the engineering of this kit is that it provided the little axles that some of the photo wash wheels would sit on, but it asked you to make your own for this part out of wire, which I realized was unnecessary in the first place only after I already made it. Oh well. After securing all the smaller parts, it was time to bust out the paint. I started off by painting the interior parts and the engine with aluminum from AK Extreme Metal. This is to create some authentic chipping effects inside of the cockpit later on. Then I took this heavy chipping fluid from Ammo, which is already airbrush ready, so it's perfect for our purposes, and I sprayed it in two light coats over the painted parts in the interior, not the engine. For the main color, I have the Soviet interior gray from AK Real Colors. These are acrylic lacquer paints, very similar to Tamiya paints, which means that they can either be thinned with lacquer thinner or their own branded thinner. Oh, and I also painted the instrument panel black while my airbrush was out. Then immediately after the paint was dry, I wet the surface with a bit of water and watched the magic happen. Because of the chipping fluid we applied, I can scratch off the top paint layer easily with a toothpick revealing the silver color underneath. And yeah, I'm calling this magic. I know there's a bunch of chemistry behind it, but I got a 73 in high school chemistry, so it's just magic to me. Yeah! Once that was done, we can move on to painting the details with Vallejo acrylics. Because they have very good coverage properties for brush painting, and they're also odorless, which is always a plus. Most of the details are either silver or black, so I use those colors accordingly. The seatbelts I test fitted a lot to get them into the correct shape and then super glued them into the correct positions. Then I painted them in brown sand and the buckles in silver. Now here I took some creative liberties instead of following historical documentation because I painted the trigger on the control yoke red instead of black which is what it was supposed to be. Because sometimes reality is pretty boring and we need to sacrifice some realism in order for the result to be more dynamic. Anyway, the instrument panel was assembled by placing a decal in between a photo etch piece and a plastic part. Then I simply painted the rest of the details on it with a paintbrush. Anyway, let's put away the acrylics for now and give the interior a wash. Usually I'd have to clear coat parts airbrushed with flat paints before applying washes, 
but the paint finish was so smooth I didn't need to do that. The wash flowed effortlessly into all the panels and I was able to clean off the excess without any problems. The cockpit still looked pretty clean to me for an in-service aircraft, so I decided to dirty up the floor a bit with some Optilung 502 oil paints. The engine also received a wash, but in this case a black one. This is probably one of the only cases where I use a pure black wash for something, mainly because they're usually fairly dark and monotone. This is my favorite product for weathering engines, and it's this grayish brownish grime color that I just unceremoniously slap onto the whole part and then once it's dried at the touch clean the excess off with a cotton bud. This gives the engine this worn grimy look which is the exact effect we're going after with this model. And after that we can start putting everything together. And I gotta give it to the engineers of this model. The engineering here is very, very good. Like, the fuselage isn't just molded into two halves, as you could probably see here. No, there are multiple panels, especially in the front section where there are a lot of rivets that you have to put together. This makes potential filling and sanding very easy, as most of the lines between the parts are supposed to be there on the real aircraft, and the parts that need filling don't run through areas with a lot of detail that could potentially be destroyed with sanding and filling. And not to mention the fit itself was pretty spectacular in most cases. The only parts that weren't going together, well, perfectly, are this part with the two wings attached to them and the vertical stabilizers in the back. But Honestly, this is such a minor hiccup, like, it could be fixed with, like, what, 5 minutes, 10 minutes of time sanding? I honestly can't wait till we get to apply pin wash on this aircraft to highlight all of those lovely surface details. But one thing at a time, as right now we need to sand down the putty we just applied to some of the gaps, and polish it down with a finer sanding sponge. The exhaust pipes on this plane are oval, so first I drilled out a hole with a micro drill, and then scraped off the excess plastic with a knife, thus matching the hole to the exhaust pipe. Twenty minutes later, and then I attached them to the both sides of the engine cowling. The last part before I had to deal with the canopy was the oil cooler on the bottom of the aircraft, which I attached again without any issues. A really weird thing with the design of this model is casting the gun sight in regular plastic rather than clear plastic. I understand it's a small scale, but I've built rebel kits where the part was casted in clear plastic. Again, it's not too much of an issue at this scale, so I just painted it in silver, but really weird in my opinion. Anyway, here I'm beginning to make the canopy masks out of regular Tommy masking tape by putting it on the clear parts and then carefully cutting away the excess in the shape of a window. Be extremely careful when doing this, because if you put too much pressure with the blade, you could scratch the canopy, and that's gonna be very hard if not impossible to fix. So yeah, no pressure. Usually I like to attach clear parts with PVA glue because it dries clear and doesn't damage the plastic, but it doesn't matter in this case because the part that we're gluing is gonna be painted over anyway. And yeah, that's going to be it for now. We got a lot of stuff done today, and I'm really looking forward to painting this thing. What do you guys think? Did you like what you saw? If so, then consider subscribing and leaving this video a like, because next video will be all about painting this thing. You could also follow me on my Instagram page where I have in-progress pics of builds and other fun stuff. Link down below. And with that said, thank you very much for making it to the end, and I will see you all next time. Peace.